Hello, this is Oncology Podcasting, and I'm Ellen Baker. Each week, we will be delivering interesting news and information about advances in the field of cancer research and treatment. We will be discussing a wide range of topics and sharing some of the latest information available. This week's cancer news is about lung cancer and computerized tomography, simply called CT scan. Lung cancer has the highest death rate among those with cancer. More than 164,000 individuals die each year of lung cancer. Even among early stage 1 lung cancer, the number of patients surviving at 5 years is only 70%. When it reaches stage 4, the 5-year survival rate drops dramatically to only 5%. It is unfortunate that we diagnose these early stage patients mostly by accident often while performing a workup for another reason. Because screening methods to detect cancers of the breast, colon, prostate, and cervix have resulted in better survival rates, additional screening studies have been conducted using chest x-rays. And to try and detect lung cancer at an early stage with the hope of achieving similar outcomes. Unfortunately, previous studies have not shown any benefits from screening for lung cancer. However, recently a group of investigators has reported that an annual screening with low-dose CT scan may be able to detect early-stage lung cancer that could be potentially curable. A CT imaging system is a form of x-rays that produces cross-sectional images or slices body anatomy, like the slices in a loaf of bread. The study conducted internationally with participating institutions from the United States, Europe, and Asia generated interesting results. Between 1993 and 2005, investigators screened 31,567 asymptomatic individuals who had a high risk for lung cancer. High-risk individuals were defined as those who have a history of cigarette smoking a history of occupational exposure to asbestos, uranium, beryllium, or radon, and those who did not smoke but had a significant exposure to secondhand smoke. CT screening was then repeated 7 to 18 months after the initial screening for 27,456 of the individuals. Of the initial 31,567 participants who had an initial CT screening, 4,186 individuals were found to have at least one nodule in the lung and 405 were found to have lung cancer after a biopsy. For those individuals who had annual CT screenings, the lung nodules were found in 1,460 individuals, with 74 diagnosed with lung cancer. The total number of participants who were diagnosed with lung cancer was 484. Of those 484 participants who developed cancer, 85% had stage 1 lung cancer and their estimated survival rate at 10 years was 88%, significantly better than the current 5-year survival rate of 70% for clinical stage 1 lung cancer. While there is talk about the benefit of CT screening for lung cancer, a recent article in the Wall Street Journal raises concern over excessive radiation exposure associated with too many CT scans. The advancement in CT technology has led to improved efficiency and increased indications for its use. As a result, there has been explosive growth in the use of CT scanning in recent years. In 2003, there were 57 million CT scans performed, with some individuals receiving multiple CT scans, exposing them to total radiation doses at levels near those of some survivors of nuclear attacks on Japan in World War II. Those survivors received an average dosage of 20 millisieverts, a measurement of radiation exposure. For comparison, a single chest CT scan has an average radiation of 8 to 10 millisieverts. 10 millisieverts is said to be associated with an increased risk of cancer. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, a CT examination with an effective dose of 10 millisieverts may be associated with an increase in the possibility of cancer of approximately 1 in 2,000. The natural incidence of fatal cancer in the U.S. population is about 1 in 5. 
In other words, for any one person, the risk of radiation-induced cancer is much smaller than the natural risk of cancer. Also, there are certain differences. The bomb survivors receive this amount of radiation all at once, while patients under controlled CT scanning are exposed to small doses of radiation that accumulate over time. We don't know the effects of this kind of exposure. Additionally, the types of radiation being used are different. Currently, there are no studies that have analyzed the impact of the CT scan as a cause for cancer. Furthermore, it is believed that there is a lag time of about 20 years between the radiation exposure and the development of a detectable cancer. We feel that the ability to detect an early stage lung cancer outweighs the risk of radiation exposure from CT screening in certain individuals. CT screening is beneficial and should be considered for individuals who are at high risk of developing lung cancer. Individuals who smoke, who have a history of occupational exposure, and who have a history of exposure to secondhand smoke. Nevertheless, radiation is a radiation. It is always best not to get exposed to it unless it is necessary. However, there is a caveat. Unfortunately, not all insurance companies will cover the screening procedure. We recommend talking with your doctor to determine your level of risk and the potential value of the screening. Thanks for listening. If you have questions about this podcast, make sure that you contact us at our website at www.oncologypodcasting.com. For Oncology Podcasting, this is Ellen Baker.